Not only has the Tamiya Blockhead Wild One dropped this week, but so has the Tamiya Avanti. Let's check it out. Hi and welcome to Icy Kicks. So it's finally here, the Super Avanti TD4 under kit 58696. Now a massive thank you to Lee from LNL Models for expediting this one to me as fast as humanly possible as these are dropping right now in the UK. So if you've got one of these on order, you should be getting them in the next few days. Now one thing before we continue, I'm sorry I've got a cold and it seems to have come through. So uh, I'm might be a bit dribbly and a bit nasally so sorry about that anyway let's carry on it's too important and too exciting now it's all the way back in june when we found out that this was actually going to be released hi mark Tussy kicks on today's show well we've got some more breaking news coming out of tamia and that is the super avanti so we've had to wait five months now there's been a massive challenge from a logistic point of view from Tamiya to actually get these kits out. Now it's fantastic to see Tamiya bringing out more and more kits. And you know, I've always been a bit of an advocate for bringing out modern versions of character cars like they did back in the day. And I think this is exactly what I had in mind that I think they should do. And I think it's a very bold move for them to do it. You know, they're keeping the character sort of design but putting a whole new spin on it. This is not a re-release from anything else. Yes, you could talk about the name, that's a bit different. Why it couldn't just have its own name, I honestly don't know. But hey, we're just trading on the Avanti name. But that's personal choice. But I still think it was brilliant that they've actually done it, for sure. This is exactly what Tamiya did back in the day, and it's great to see them coming back and doing new kits. So hopefully we're gonna get a character, but also the performance improvements for modern plastics, modern designs, and things like that. Now, if you are looking to add one of these to your collection, you're currently looking at 319 to 324 pound in the UK if you can find one. The major issue at the moment is stock limitation. It's so all over the place that some are coming, they're not coming. The numbers that are arriving, it's really challenging. So it's very difficult for the uh, Tamiya resellers in the UK to know what stock they're getting. So bear with them. It's not down to them. It's just the whole logistic nightmare that we seem to be going through at the moment. As an avid Avanti collector, I just had to get the Super Avanti on the show. Uh, I'm trying to have one of everything and I'm lucky enough to currently have all Avanti 1 10th buggy kits released so I had to get this on the show I still haven't finished my uh, 2001 Avanti body yet but I'll, it'll be on the show soon don't worry but things are getting absolutely manic there's so many projects as we build towards Christmas so if you haven't already please like and subscribe as there is tons of builds coming we've got the wild one we've got the truck to finish we've got this to build and I've got a few other RTRs to put on the show and we've got the competition between the Dark Impact and the Ready to Runs coming. There is loads of content piling in right now. Okay, that's enough waffle. Let's open it up and take a look at what you get for your money. I have to say the box art was lovely, beautifully done. As for the presentation, it's pretty basic. There's no blister packs or anything like that. It's a kind of generic layout that you get. Now the first one is a very controversial one and that is the wheels. Now the wheels aren't as acid green as I thought they are. They are kind of yellow, but I still think they are not dark enough to match the paint color of the yellow body. But I'm pretty sure some aftermarket people who make brilliant Tamiya wheels could fix that problem and make these wheels in the correct color. Or you could always paint them as well if you want to, depending if you've got a shelf queen. Obviously, if you've got a runner, you'll probably change the wheels anyway. Um, but hopefully there'll be some actual correct wheels coming out for it in the correct color, and I'll be first to buy them and fit them on my car. The body set for it, 
Now this is probably the most challenging aspect of the car. A lot of people have been trying to adapt these and I'm actually seeing people that have cut out the canopy. Now I don't know when we're going to be able to get hold of body sets but I'd like to have an attempt at changing one. I've got an idea that what I would like to do is cut a section out of the canopy so that it looks like the canopy is open slightly. But obviously I won't do it on this one. This will probably end up just being box art for now. And then I will see if I can acquire another body to do something a bit more funky with it. But I think it's a challenge if you want to mod it to get it to look really, really good. But hey, we'll just have to wait and see. Next we have arms. Now one thing that impressed me with the kit and all the photographs I've seen is the arms on this look very strong. They look very thick. So I think Tamiya has put a lot of effort into trying to make this a strong racing buggy. Now I'm not saying it's going to be competing with the likes of Schumacher racing buggies and you know professional buggies, but I think it's definitely going to be a step in the right direction if you want to take this round of track. The plastics that they've used obviously are a bit more premium. This is the bulkheads bulkhead sections back and front I mean it is a very unique chassis which is really interesting to see something different as well battery trays and oh, loads of little plastic shims um, plastic gearing what's that bumpers there's a lot of parts on here I've never seen before so uh, it's gonna be a roll cage uh, roll hoops sorry for the driver the chassis itself so yeah, very different. And there's a lot of integration into the chassis of the diffs. So from an engineering point of view, it's a very precise kit. What have we got here? Uh, outdrive, uh, uprights. Uh, what's this one here? This does feel like it's been slung in the, in the box a bit. And then, I have no idea, some kind of cover, uh, back upright. Uh, slipper clutch cover and steering parts tires the standard square ones now I have a feeling about this if you if you know your Tamiya's you'll know that the round spikes are the rare ones that came on like the likes of the Evo and the Dynastorm now I've had quite a few of those tires they're quite rare and I had a Dynastorm that's never been run and the tires still split on it so it's weird that Tamiya now produced these square spikes but not the round ones. Now I'd be interested to know why that is because obviously they can produce round spikes. Uh, this is one of two reasons I can think of. One, those uh, the mold for those design, um, they had an issue with the side wall delaminating so they've changed it. Or two, the only other thing I can think of is that they want to do square spikes to have a bit of separation from the vintage ones. I honestly don't know. Comment below. Let me know what you think on that one. But if you want round spikes on your car or your vintage stuff, you're going to be paying a premium as they just don't produce them anymore. Then we've got our little Avanti box. Let's see what we get in there. So we have our driver figure, pretty standard driver figure from Tamiya. Then we've got the suspension aspect. Uh, the servo saver, some more suspension parts. Then we've got bag E, C, suspension uh, parts, more suspension. Bag A, nice bit of blue anodizing bling there. Uh, and some bits and bobs, not sure what they are. D is the uh, prop shaft, is an aluminium um, anodized in blue. Bull diff, bearings, woohoo, bearings. And uh, grease and another bull diff. And, that, and that's pretty much it in there. Then we have the stickers. Let's have a look at the decals. Uh, I wouldn't say they're terribly difficult, but uh, they might be a little bit of a faff standard decals and window masks and then you get your standard manual but obviously the great manuals that you get from Tamiya you know they've been doing excellent manuals for a long time right let's cut to a montage and then you can take a good look and then we'll come back and wrap up
So there you go, that's just a quick look at the TD4 from Tamiya. Stay tuned, hit that like and subscribe button as there's going to be tons more content coming from kit builds to ready to runs. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.